Shalom, this is Ask the Rabbi Vat, number 11, with lots of good questions this time. Uh, somebody asked me, uh, presented a situation about Mamze Root, which is illegitimate children. The case here was that the, the mother of two daughters, her mother, had married a Jew before, married her father, got divorced but no get, married her father, had her. She's technically a Mamzer. She wants to know if her daughters want to marry an Orthodox Jew, whether the Orthodox rabbis will accept their daughters without asking questions about the grandmother. Uh, if you want to know more about this situation of Jewish illegitimacy, that would be my video number JUU203. Uh, I don't actually know the answer to that question. I don't know what Orthodox rabbis would do. I do know that, as I mentioned in that video, JUU203, that conservative Reform and Reconstructionist rabbis don't ask questions like that to get information about mom's their status and disregard the category now. Uh, so we don't consider that an issue in the status of Jewish children. Then the next question was a series of questions about Shabbat. Somebody wanted to know uh, if they have to work on the Saturday, will a rabbi convert them? An Orthodox rabbi probably would not, but most other rabbis I think would. Certainly if you try and bring Shabbat into your life in other ways and you work towards uh, not working on Shabbat, that would definitely be something that we'd uh, want to see favorably. Of course, we know that most non-Orthodox Jews do work on Shabbat, uh, and that wouldn't be a barrier to somebody converting to Judaism from a non-Orthodox perspective. Uh, the same person wanted to know whether driving to Shul on Shabbat is sanctioned by the conservative movement. Yes, there was a decision in 1950 from our law committee that says you can drive to the synagogue on Shabbat. Then uh, somebody wanted to know about kashrut, whether eating fish and cheese is permissible. The answer to that is yes. Fish is viewed in the category of parv, which means it's not meat and not milk. And something that's parv can be eaten with cheese or meat, not at the same time. So fish, uh, a fish with cheese definitely can be eaten. Uh, then somebody wanted to know about Shabbat observance and how it differs between the conservative, reform, and orthodox group. And I think you should see my video on Jew Yu. 21 uh, about Shabbat, which explains a little bit more. Uh, basically, there's quite a bit of difference. Orthodox Jews will not do any milacha, any labor. They won't drive in a car. They won't spend money. They won't turn on a fire. Uh, they won't carry in a public domain. Uh, they won't go to work. They won't use computers. They won't write. Uh, most conservative Jews are taught that those are the rules, except we're permitted to drive on Shabbat, and we believe electricity is okay if it's not working, but simply to enhance your enjoyment of Shabbat. Other than that, we follow pretty much the same rules, but most conservative Jews don't, even though that's what they're taught. Uh, reform practice, I spent two years at a wonderful reform camp, and there they used the pot machine on Shabbat, people wrote, so they don't have the same, or at least didn't have the same ritual restrictions about Shabbat observance. Uh, I'm not a reform uh, rabbi, so I don't know exactly what goes on in reform synagogues, and um, but I believe that um, they don't have the same notion of forbidden work on the Sabbath day. Uh, then somebody wanted to know about slavery and the Bible's issues about slavery. A very interesting question. There's several things to note. First of all, slavery was a really indentured servitude, where you put yourself and someone other's employee to work in their household and community to pay off debts. Uh, maybe like the poor house in ancient England, but certainly human beings were respected. The Torah has many laws, like look at Exodus 21, re regarding the humane treatment of the person. They're viewed as human beings, not property. Completely different than the connotation of slavery that existed in uh, America before the Civil War. In fact, the Torah says over and over and over, do not oppress the stranger, for you were slaves in the land of Egypt, reminding people not to be oppressed. In fact, slavery existed until modern times, and these rules are being written 4,000, 3,000 years ago, says something significant. Uh, in a different, uh, the non-Jewish slaves, when they were became uh, uh, that kind of economic status in someone's household, it was voluntary. It wasn't you weren't kidnapped and forced to be a slave in that way. That was the notion of slavery. Now, when there was a war, the Torah also has a, an idea about taking people as booty in war, but they were always treated with uh, human dignity, um, and the Torah specifies those rules. Of course, it's not the ideal situation. We live in a completely free market today where people don't have those economic arrangements, but this was thousands of years ago in a world where 
horrible slavery existed outside of the Torah until pretty modern times. Then somebody wanted to know about converting. They said their whole family and everybody they know is Christian. If they want to be Jewish, how would they maneuver that? So I recommend you see my video, Jew U42, about conversion in general. Also, you might want to see, to touch on this issue, my video, Jew U290, which discusses the challenge that that person would face at Christmas and Hanukkah time. Uh, but in general, said, you know, certainly wouldn't want to hurt a marriage and uh, disrupt a family. If you're in a small town, being one of the only Jews would be very difficult. But if you feel called to being Jewish, definitely there are ways to uh, live as a Jew. Many people do with a uh, Christian family. And somebody wanted to know about uh, a verse in Leviticus 27 about not cutting the corners of your beard. You may see uh, many Orthodox Jews with beards. Uh, you may see uh, Orthodox Jews with fringes uh, down the side, like long earlocks called payas, which means the corners, and it comes from that idea, not to round the corners of your bird, beards. Now, non-Orthodox Jews don't pay attention to that. Pretty much we know that verse, that verse was about not looking like a Canaanite priest, and we don't have Canaanite priests running around, so we don't worry about what they look like today, but the Orthodox still take that very seriously, and um, the ultra-Orthodox especially. And somebody asked me why we continue to tell the Pesach story, don't most, most Jews know it? Well, first of all, you have to continually educate people. People, the next generation doesn't know, and many be surprised how lack, lack, little knowledge there is about some basic things in the culture in general and Judaism for Jews. In addition, it's a mitzvah. The Torah commands us to tell the story. Uh, even uh, the wisest sage has to read the whole Haggadah on Passover to re continually renew the story. People forget. It doesn't become a high priority. It's such a crucial story. It has to be told all the time. Then somebody wanted to know if you can make your own prayer shawl. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and there's special ways to tie the knots. Absolutely. Uh, I suggest that you see my very first video, Jew You Number One, about the prayer shawl. Uh, I once had the afternoon when I was a kid of making my own uh, talit, and it was a beautiful experience. Of course, now there's so many wonderful designs, you can also get them. And the knots are difficult. Uh, and then somebody wanted to know, finally, about homosexuality and Judaism and the verse prohibits men from lying together. And uh, there, I believe, the orthodoxy, they really have no sanction for it. I I've, um, think it's important to note that the rabbinical assembly, the conservative rabbis, recently made a decision that uh, homosexuals could uh, be admitted into the rabbinical school and that conservative rabbis could officiate a, a, a basically commitment ceremonies between two people of the same sex. Uh, There's a whole debate there about whether that verse prohibits particular kinds of sexuality uh, between men and whether it's Torah forbidden or only the rabbis forbade it and whether countervailing values such as the respect and honor and dignity of the person which will outweigh it. In any case, the vote on the law committee was tied 13 to 13. Uh, and we, we operate, which means that those who say that rabbis should not be homosexual and that rabbis should not do commitment ceremonies have the same, in the conservative rabbinate, have the same weight as the rabbis who say that you do. And so it's up to the individual rabbi and congregation. Uh, those are short answers to some very complex and important issues. Hope that uh, this video is helpful. Ask the rabbi volume 11. Send me your questions at rabbi at ehnt.org.